All right, welcome to the weekly gaming quick save show recorded live, 3 p.m. Pacific time every Friday, right here on twitchtv BenReacts. That's me. I'm Ben in the title of the thing. Anyway, on this week's show, I'm be talking about Man in the High Castle because it's awesome, and The Witness because it's awesome, awesome. First, take a look at some of the top stories of the week as my internet breaks. We're gonna do the show anyway. Hmm. First up, Insomniac's new game, Song of the Deep, spooky title, being published by GameStop, which is interesting. I think it's good for GameStop to finally start and do a few more things. I mean, they bought ThinkGeek. They're doing things outside of games. I think they really, really need to do that. But on, on the subject of the game itself, I'm, I'm very, I'm not a big Insomniac guy. I know some people are, are big fans, and I, it's supposed to be Metroidvania, which I'm a fan of that genre. But this game doesn't look that exciting to me. It looks kind of like Pixel Junk Shooter, but not with a cool art style. And Pixel Junk Shooter also came out like eight years ago. So I'm, I'm a little confused by that. Also, one thing I noticed of particular, of particular, take a look at this explosion in the trailer. Like this is, that's, that's your explosion. That's your, ship it. That's the explosion. This, this is a big old bomb. Probably the size of a uh, of a car, and it's this little dinky ass explosion. That was my takeaway from watching this trailer. Shitty explosions. That's not a good place to start with for anyone. But speaking of disappointing trailers, and it pains me to say this, but the Pokemon Super Bowl ad. So first, I started watching it, and I thought I had a pre-roll ad, so I was gonna look at Twitter and then whatever. And I realized this ad's going on for a long time, so I start watching it. And I realized it is the ad. It is the ad in question. The ad itself was too good at being an ad. And then the last 20 seconds are actually Pokemon. And it's actually really good, and I love it, and whatever. But 80% of this is some motivational thing, which is fine. But it's not about Pokemon, and I don't give a shit. So it's very confusing to me why that no one seems to be talking about that oh it was so great oh it was so good. really it was so great i i think they could have made an ad that was more pokemon that was more celebratory this was this was almost like an after school special like you can do anything you want to do i'm like that's that's great but this is tangentially related to pokemon not not quite what i expected when i heard all the positive buzz not everything can be positive and i certainly can't ever be positive so with that the Career Chronicles Remastered is coming, and I, I just want to take a little minute, and I might elaborate on this later, too. This game is great. Not to speed that this game is really fun, it's really good, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. It's also really shitty at being a strategy game. Um, in particular, you are judged at the end of each stage based on how many turns you use to finish it. And you are rewarded more experience points the quicker you do the stage. So it rewards not not smart strategy and defeating all the enemies. No, it rewards being a fucking idiot and running around. There, There is one mission three quarters of the way through the game where the par time to get the most points, the most experience points to level up all your troops, the only way to do it and you have to do it in two turns, is to move the tank and one foot soldier the whole way through the map. Just all the way. Just those two units moving constantly. That's not strategy. That's obnoxious. So this could be an amazing strategy game if it didn't punish you for not rushing to the end. If it rewarded you for fighting all the enemies in a smart way. That would be maybe the way I would, I would like the game to be. Because otherwise it's just, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. Other things I don't understand. Mighty Number no. Nine has been delayed, and it's just as frustrating as how my internet keeps dipping in and out. So that's fun. But this is exactly why I talked about last week why I don't kickstart games anymore and why I'm tired of kickstarting things in general. Because you hear about these games too much, over and over. Mighty Number no. Nine, this. Mighty Number no. Nine, that. And it, it, I can't take it anymore. It, it gets to a certain point where I, I don't care. I want the game just come out. It's like the division, even. Just come out. I don't care. You get all, I'm, I want I want this game to be released so it, I can stop hearing about it. That's not a good thing. And more specifically with 
Kickstarter and a game like My Number Nine, I don't. I want to hear about a game when it's announced, and then I want like a year to go by and a trickling of news stories, and then the game to be out. That's it. I don't need to know every single thing along the way. It's too much information. I can't be bogged down. Can't be bogged down with that. And for fun, for fun, Fire Emblem Fates back in my news. After more watching of the, uh, or, or investigating, investigating, into the drugging and gay conversion scene, as it is called, I've come to the conclusion, yeah, it's probably a good idea that you can get rid of that. It's not necessary, not really adding much at all. Uh, eh, it's best to just kind of, I guess, brush that under the rug, for all intents and purposes. However, they also started talking about some other things they're doing, and other things they're taking out of the game, namely a mini game that you can use to get closer with your teammates, uh, raise their stats, stuff like that. Now, this mini game involves you poking and, and prodding and touching and rubbing and petting these characters all over their body, everywhere. And and the removal of this, the removal of this right here. Uh, I just have one thing to ask of Nintendo in regards to this, and that is, how how do you expect me to masturbate to this game if this isn't included? Like this is, what am I what am I supposed to do now? This isn't here, so what do I what do I do? I mean, this is, do you? I mean, am I just supposed to import Extreme Beach Volleyball now? Is that what you're telling me? Because I could do that. But I kind of I kind of wanted to rub. Now now I can't rub. Is that what that's what you're that's what you're telling me? I mean, that it seems like that's what you're telling me, right? I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. But with that all out of the way, let's get into the topics of the week as my internet slowly dies. Uh. Well, not really slowly does. That's right, we are going to review some things today, not my Twitch dashboard, Man of the High Castle. I finished the show yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I know what day it is. Don't don't question me. I know I know what day it is. All right, it's Friday probably. One of these days I'll do the show on Thursday, and I'll have no. I'll never know. Anyway, I'll, I wouldn't even be aware of it. Man in the High Castle. So it's based on a book. Blah blah blah. Don't care. We'll get back to that later. This show it does what I love a lot of shows to do in that it lets the characters kind of just breathe and go and do their own thing. It, it has the respect for material and for, for the, its audience, really, to allow a character to show up and be inconsequential and be in the background and, and build them up and you keep seeing them and you're like, oh, this guy's doing this thing, okay. And then it becomes something else. And, and there's all these parties at play. So I, maybe I should outline it a little. The Germans and the Nazis have split the United States in two. And so a lot of the plot deals with how shitty my internet's being right now for once. That's that's what the whole movie's about. The whole movie. Uh, oh, I'm watching you, Twitch. So it, it deals a lot with these, you know, characters and how they feel. It's in 1962, I believe. How they deal with being... It, uh, under the control of the Nazis or under the control of the Japanese on opposite sides of the coast. And even, even more interesting to, to me is, uh, the political intrigue that happens with that, with there is the Nazi Reich in Germany, or, yeah, in Germany, and then also in New York. And their motivations and their things. And then we got the Japanese. And we're just gonna keep replaying this. And I, I love to see, they're all playing at their own thing. So even though they're all, like all the Japanese guys are technically on the same side, all the Nazi guys are technically on the same side, they're all 
jockeying for position and in subtle ways and in ways that you you realize at the end like oh shit what's going on here it, all the all the threads it has the the justice of weaving all these threads together like this that's how you weave in a, in a way that doesn't feel oh this is the end of this episode this is the arc it's over for this character it'll have like one scene with one character and then like two episodes will go by and then they show back up and, and you, you see these things and, and it's all about the details and as I was watching the show it really struck me that this obviously it's based on a book um, and that comes that comes across really well it feels like a book in how it treats its characters and how it treats its plot and how it it's slow and methodical I mean these are episodes it, the whole show probably takes place in uh, two weeks three weeks a month I mean it doesn't and some of these episodes especially the beginning ones they're all like a day they're hours hours are going by and you're seeing all the little pieces and it just fits together and it's very fascinating to see uh, so they're collecting these films for the man in the high castle and I'm, obviously I won't spoil anything but they're collecting these films and they show a world that's not their world a world where they didn't lose the war to the Nazis and so they're trying to figure out what that means and they start there's a resistance obviously that we gotta resist the Nazis I mean come on and it's 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 so let's get into more specifics of the characters I feel like the acting is fine but the only reason why I say that is because the guy who plays oh, what's his name? John Smith he's the German commander guy is so good at being his just he's seen some shit so he was in the war he was in World War II on the Nazi side and he's now a high-ranking guy in New York and the way he's so calm and collected he's a master interrogator it's so he steals every scene he's in it's it's impossible to be like to not even to not even mention it because he's so good in it and that's why I say the other acting isn't as great specifically from the um, the younger character I guess younger I mean they're in their 20s maybe 30s low, low 30s it's just his character is so freaking good um, and how, how it's all weaved together is is masterful I, I really do like that from what I understand and I just found this out uh, maybe about half an hour ago this season covers the whole first book but I'm not sure on that. I don't really want to spoil the whole book because I kind of wanted to read the book. But there, this has been renewed for another season, so it's very interesting to think of what could happen next if there is no if there is no material. Now you can go off and do this whole thing, which is very interesting to me because I thought I felt like it. I didn't feel like it rushed. I didn't. I felt like there was so much more material. If this is how the book ends. That's crazy to me. Because this is, it's not necessarily an unsatisfying ending to this story. It's kind of intentionally uh, vague and uh, up to your own conclusions. But it's, it's a really good show. It's really great. I don't, uh, there's, there's minor, minor, there's minor, 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 minor quibbles, but no. It's, it's definitely worth watching, if not only for the setting alone. And just to see what happens because it defies kind of what you'd think. The characters do things and the way it goes is not the way you'd think it'd go and a lot of the time. Like I didn't think half these things were going to happen or the way they happened happened. And some things you can kind of see telegraphed and you're like, oh, they're, they're going to do that. That guy's going to get shot or whatever. And it might have been, but it's going to happen in a way that's different. Uh, particularly the beginning, the first episode has two characters traveling to the neutral zone in the middle of the country, which, which isn't really described or explained, which is fine. Whatever. Neither is the resistance, so. Or how they won the war. Um, but you have them going there, and you think the whole story is going to be, you know, the East Coast stuff, the West Coast stuff, and then the neutral zone stuff. And they're there in the neutral zone. For like two, three episodes, and then they go back, and it's just, it's this crazy thing of like you, you'd expect them to come together, and it'd be like a buddy cop thing. These two fish out of water meet in the neutral zone, and they do shit. 
but that's not what it is. And that was what was very interesting about it to me. It kept doing things of like, oh, that's not where this is going? Okay, well, where is it going? And and where it ends up is so good and so interesting and, and definitely worth a watch, definitely worth a watch to, to think on it and think, what does it mean? What could it mean? Because there's there's some crazy stuff that's going on. And it's and it's so creepy too to see the American flag with the, the swastika on it. Like kinda like that. That's kind of weird. I just realized I'm playing in the swastika. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I love my internet's breaking. So not to belabor the point anymore. Go watch the show. That is all. Back to review slide. Oh, let's talk about that. The show, I mean, that's the thing too. I, I was watching the show. Halfway through the show, I realized this is a fucking good book. <laughs> like, I want to watch this. want to watch this book. Uh, I want to read this book. And there's so few things where you, you watch that. Like, I want to I wanna read this book. This feels like a book, and it feels like a good book. Uh, but if it's if the whole book is just the first season, that's very interesting, and I want to see where they go with it but it, it's it it's so strange too because like uh, I watched the first couple seasons of Game of Thrones and then and then read the books but with this I watched the show and was like and well watching Game of Thrones I never once was like I bet this would be good in the book it was just something I wanted to do but with this show I specifically as my internet dies I specifically why I want to watch the book I want to stop saying watch the book I wanted to I must have watched the book again. I wanted to watch the book, right? With all its pages flowing above my eyes. Fucking psychopath. But yeah. It... And the book's not very long, too. It's like less than 300 pages. Not Game of Thrones. We're going to try and read all that. Seems right up my alley, too, that, that book. The book just for me. <laughs> Love on my internet just fucking sucks there. Duh. The witness. Moving on from, from the Nazis to the witness. Very, very, very similar topics. So I really like, let's just skip ahead here. I really like puzzles. Um, <laughs> just a goofy thing to say. And I really like, so with the witness, it's been a long time in development, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I've been following it and expecting it, and, and I wasn't super excited, but I was interested, very interested. And so, last, when the review started coming out, the first thing I did was look up, well, what kind of puzzles are in this game? Because I don't want missed puzzles where I'm finding a, an egg, and I gotta place the egg and the scepter, and then the, the thing flies. I, I, no, I'm too stupid for that. So, what I wanted was puzzles. Straight up. Puzzles, just puzzles. And when one one review I found was, it basically said, "Hey, this whole game is drawing a line from one end to another end." And I was like, "Okay, sold, done. Let's do some fucking puzzles." That's what. It, and this is this is me playing the first hour of the game. Um, but hot damn. I mean, these are simple mazes, right? You can solve a maze, but it starts getting into these crazy town logic rules where you got symbols and you got to put two symbols together, but they can't touch the other symbols. And if there's another one of these, it's all these rules. And then Tetris pieces start showing up on my floor. I can see I made Tetris pieces out of post-it notes. 
so that I could stack them in a physical space and see them more easily because I'm terrible at, at uh, Tetris, which is weird. But I, I, I oscillate between loving this game to pieces and wanting to just strangle it because it's so clever. There, there are things like each each area of the game is basically solve a bunch of puzzles to open up a little laser light and the laser light you're shooting all the lasers and I haven't done all the lasers I think I still have like two more to do uh, to complete each one has its own little thing its own um, thing to figure out so one of them that's early in the game that's probably the one I'm about to go do is uh, actually let's, let's skip over to that actually. No, we won't skip over to that. That's what I thought. So, th so like in a puzzle like this, you are there's little circles. I don't know if you can see them, but in the cross sections, there's little dots. So your goal is to collect all the dots and get to the end. I love puzzles like that. Fucking, I could do the puzzles like that all day. It doesn't matter if they're easy or hard. I just want to eat stupid blocks like I'm Pac-Man. So there's puzzles like that. And then the first section you go to, the, uh, that I went to, has where you, you're controlling one, one little worm, worm line, and it's moving another one, and they're mirror images of each other. So you have to move them all around like that, and that's the trick of that area. And it's fascinating. And it gets to the point <laughs> where you go to the next area, and you're like, what's the clue here? What's the trick here? And you start looking around, and it's things in the environment. It's things that that you would expect. There's one involving... I, I don't even know if I want to... Is it spoilers to say that? Uh, oh, I, I've played the game for about 18 hours, so... and done about 300-something of the puzzles. I think the, the people saying it's 100 hours to solve everything, yeah, probably, if you didn't have the internet. Um, but even without that, it, it's not... A lot of them aren't that hard, and we'll get back to difficulty in a minute. There's so much... So it's so much it's about solving the clue and the hint and realizing, oh, that thing in the environment, that's the answer. Because it starts presenting you with blank ones that are only there, that are only, uh, you know, there's no way to know the answer. So you have to use the environment. You have to look around and see, see what's going on. Yes, I agree with that. And people, oh, I saw this in the comments of one of the reviews and it made me, go crazy uh they were like i really liked this game when i played it on congregate in 2010 lol or whatever and i'm like you are missing the entire point this game is so much more than just oh a puzzle oh some puzzles and actually i'll skip further ahead to, to more interesting puzzles because what it does with with these different areas and how they're how you solve it and how you look around the world and you start seeing things and you're like okay that that's a hidden clue i see that now i understand the world and and some of the reviews even even said this where uh it was like oh i don't understand uh or i don't understand i i i close my eyes and i see the see the lines and all this shit and i'm like yeah yeah whatever this is me being an idiot trying to solve a puzzle you can't solve it but i legitimately had dreams last night about solving these puzzles and and it's the, the other crazy thing about this game is that it see here's the double worm thing i'm talking about the other crazy thing about this game is for the first time since i don't know dark souls one it's been many many years that i've played a game i've sat down to play a game and four hours go by and i'm like i don't want to stop i want to keep solving these stupid ass puzzles and even when, uh, even when I'm really frustrated with the game, in particular, there's one area of the game, which I will spoil because it's fucking garbage. It's the jungle. The jungle, um, there's a bamboo jungly area. And the puzzles all revolve around sound. And that's, that's fine. And for the first half of those puzzles, I can do it. I can solve it. Oh, here's the, Here's the whatever. Um, you know, I, I can kind of guess the waveform it's trying to tell me to do. So it's like these bird noises, like, rah, 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 these stupid fucking bird noises. 
and that's fine and I kind of fumbled my way through uh, the, the first half of them right and then I get to the end and there's like they are towards the end and they start having like a phone noise someone someone's calling on the phone while while you're trying to solve a puzzle with bird squeals and it's awful it is so terrible and it, it's incredibly frustrating so I did most of those I, I used the guide for the last one of that section and then I went it goes to the bamboo area because you're not done yet you gotta listen to more sounds first okay so we go to this other section I gotta listen to more sounds. I have no fucking clue how you're supposed to solve this next area no clue at all it makes no sense to me and I don't I, I so I looked up how to do it because fuck you I'm not playing these stupid sounds I'm playing this game for this this right here these logic puzzles these mazes, these mystery things, I'm moving blocks, I'm fitting Tetris pieces in. That's why I'm playing in the game. That's why I love the game. I'm not playing the game to play some shitty music beeping noise shit that doesn't make any sense and the game never explains it. Now, it's entirely possible because there was a mechanic there I didn't understand. It's entirely possible I haven't been taught how to do that yet. But you can go fuck yourself. Because I've been to basically every area in the game and I still haven't seen those little dots that you have to do in the order the sound that's and I don't even here's the thing here's the thing too about about the sounds when I was when I was young I um in fifth grade sixth grade I don't know one of those grades I played the saxophone and I could read sheet music and I never practiced and I never did anything I could just do it so I have musical talent if I actually sat down and gave a shit. I could probably play something. I'm also really good at Guitar Hero. Tangentially related. Probably not. But the sounds on this are so... It's just, it doesn't set up rules. Like for every other section, it'll, it'll, give, you, it'll give you a thing. So it's like, okay, here's this symbol. And here's two squares. So you, I could draw this. I can draw this. So, all right. So here's how the puzzle will go. Red. I picked the fucking worst color. So here's how the puzzle will go, right? So you got this, and then the next one will be like this, um, like this. All right. So then we got this star, and this star, and we got this star. So God, this marker stinks. So this is how the game trains you essentially so it'll show you let me make sure this is in frame there we go it'll show you like this and it'll have a star and so you have to draw and figure out what the star means right so then it put, gives you two stars so you have to figure out oh oh the stars the stars uh if i do two stars it works if i split them up it doesn't work so it trains you it it does simple puzzles like this and it it gives you information and it tells you how to do the game with the sound puzzles it just fucking makes bird noises at you and expects you to know that a high-pitched squeal is up and a lower one that's not really that much lower is in the middle and an even lower one is lower fuck you those puzzles are terrible and I have no problems with the fact that I cheated on those puzzles half of them um, no problem at all. No problem whatsoever. And I oh Yep. There's that where that goes now. Uh break everything. <laughs> I like when you drop those whiteboards, it sounds like it sounds like the world is crumbling in a black hole, like it's just being shrunk together. But it really just fell like three feet. <laughs> it sounds like someone got in a car accident, but it's just a whiteboard. The, okay, so, but but ignoring that, ignoring the frustration with those audio puzzles, there are these areas where it's just the fun logic puzzles over and over and over and over again. And I did one yesterday where the, 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 you see, the environment is so important and it's, it's, it is very much like, I don't mind looking up. If I get stuck 10 puzzles in out of 20, I'm going to look up that one puzzle because it's like, I'm not going to spend more than 10, 15 minutes on a single puzzle in the middle of a section. I'm not going to look up the clue. I'm not going to look up the hint, right? I'm not going to look up 
the the solution to the problem. I, I'm gonna see I'm gonna figure it out on my own and be and have that aha moment of like, oh you gotta look through this way. Well, I'll say. Uh, that's what that's fine. But once I know your clue, once I know your hint, and I'm having trouble with this this one puzzle revol um this one section of the world revolves around reflections. And so the fun in those puzzles is absent for me because the entire solution is merely finding the right way to view the reflection and then solving the puzzle. And and it becomes less a game of, of logic, it becomes a frustrating dance of where do I look? Do I look down here? Do I look this? I gotta raise the water level. And it's not fun. And those things are so frustrating to me when 80% of the game is so mind-blowingly fun to me because I love puzzles. The rest of the game is so good, and then it and then it just pulls me down with these shitty puzzles that aren't even good. The audio puzzle is terrible. The reflection place not as terrible, and by no means as terrible, uh, but not but not fun because it's one of those things where I, I guess I just have to have a notebook and I gotta write everything down and. And that's that's all well and good, but not like this. This isn't using my brain. This is using, it's like a, what is it? There's a word for, for it, but it's it's, spatial, it's like using spatial awareness to solve a puzzle. So basically, it's as though, it's akin to you're taking a math test in school, right? And, and you look over there, you don't know the answer because you're a, a lazy idiot. And you look over there. And you're like, okay, that person has solved question eight. They have the answer to question eight. So you look over, and you're like, okay, 42. And then you look over here, and you're like, oh, you got question nine? All right, B. That's what all those puzzles feel like to me. They're All they are is just like, I got to figure out where where do I look to, you know, where do I look to find the answer? And then once you find the answer, you just write it down. So that's fun. That's that's the akin of having a book in front of you, and you just have to turn to different pages to find the book. Well, I don't like that. I'm getting off a tangent. <laughs> puzzles like this are amazing, and specifically with these puzzles where I'm showing, I realize I'm showing a lot of answers here. Anyway, puzzles like this are so fascinating to me because this is, and oh my god, it's so fucking good. The, this, the more of these you solve, the, the yellow line, I'm pointing at my screen, the yellow line it grows faint. It grows invisible. And then, even more important, you'll be going to the world and you'll see similar mechanics. You'll see the double-headed dragon worm and, and you'll use the skills you've had before. There's this one area where each panel was like, oh, this is a panel like from this area. And you solve it that one way. And then this is a panel from the other area. Okay, you solve it that way. And it's so it's so fascinating. And I, I've heard this said about the game before. It is very much like learning a language in a very strange way. Um, a very strange way. But it's so much fun. And it when it's when it's annoying and bad, it can it can go straight to hell. But even with that, even with me being frustrated for like two hours with this game, I still love it. I still go back to it, and I, I go back to this one area uh, in this this like treetop area, which is my favorite area in the game because it's all logic puzzles, and it's literally these these squares that just keep folding and folding and folding and folding and folding of all these panels over and over and over and over again. It's just puzzle after puzzle, and that's what I fucking want. I'm a puzzle nerd. For these puzzles, this specific type of puzzle that is just solving a maze in the correct way and, 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 and figuring out its mysteries, it's so, oh this one took me a while, it's so good and it does things to kind of subvert your expectations so it'll have a rule set that kind of changes, like I mentioned that the worm goes away. Um, it's so it's so fascinating and it's so smartly done and I understand that some kind of there's some kind of twisty thing and my internet also sucks that's unrelated right now but 
it's it's so good and I, I don't want to say like final judgment until I've done more of the puzzles but I've done a lot of the puzzles done a lot of the areas I'm about to go up the mountain and do whatever that means I don't know what that even means uh -huh. but it's so much fun it's so good and, and it's it's stupid to say oh this game's forty dollars okay well a lot of games are forty dollars right and and this this feels there's so much and it's so creative each area is its own game that's bigger than your bullshit congregate game um, what, what do you say over here? what do you think of broken age I've only recently got to play and I have to say a lot of these puzzles felt like absolute nonsense to me I specifically didn't play broken age or any of those uh, adventure games because I'm bad at them in the sense of that yes they are they're they're nonsensical they are oh you have a broken microwave and there's a pizza in it and you take the pizza out and then you go to a door later in the game and the, and the pizza cheese from the dried pizza can wedge the door open and you're like okay I guess that's how I wedge the door open like I don't know what the fuck how's I supposed to know that that's why I like these puzzles these puzzles are very much uh, here's the world here's some stuff and there you go it's not throwing in all this garbage but the other thing it does that like adventure games like, like that don't do because adventure games like that are like that are very linear this game is I could I could fail this puzzle I'm doing right here and then I could just leave right I could just leave and go and do one of hundreds of other puzzles and do there are seven other areas in the game right or there's more than that <laughs> probably ten other areas in the game I could go to right at the start and they all for the most part they all have their own rule set and I can just go do them right I can just go do them and that's the that's the genius of it because you will get stuck and I'll just leave you know like eh, I'm stuck in this puzzle I'll just come back you know I'll come back later maybe I don't understand this mechanic it's involving the Tetris pieces but I haven't used them yet um, so I'm not quite sure that all the rules for them so come back and you can go anywhere you can go anywhere and do anything and you don't need a goddamn pizza slice to open the door um, there are things you'll run, stumble across there's one door I don't know where it is but I stumbled upon it early in the game and it had like 30 different symbols on it and I want to find it now you know 16 hours later when I know what a lot of those symbols mean I want to see I want to see what that's about and uh, it's it's just so much fun to solve these puzzles it's so stupid it's so dumb but it's so much fun and it's also gorgeous very very beautiful art style. Uh, varied environment you know, this is a a lake kind of in the desert and then the next area is sandy desert and then there's a, that's a quarry and uh, there's a jungle I mentioned the shitty jungle the good thing about the jungles is one of the shorter areas probably about 12 15 puzzles in total Let's see. This one right here is where the where the snake, the two snake worms start to uh, the one starts to fade. Very fascinating to me. Very very fascinating. Like how squeaky my chair is. I wonder if you can hear that. I'm actually really. Oh shit. Oh no, Zelda. Save the day. That's going to be a bitch to pick up the marker that fell, but that's fine. Anyway, the witness is great. Merry Christmas, witness. I will stay around if you have anything to ask me about the game because it's great. <laughs> it's really great. Um, it's frustrating, though, in looking up solutions to some of these puzzles. I get stuck on one every once in a while. Um, not that I'm like a genius, um, but. It's it's tough to look up things because people on the internet are, are so they're so into the solution. They just want to show you the solution. I don't want the solution. I want to know a clue. I want to know a hint. And in that way, the game kind of kind of falters. There is no hint system. Like just fact, you know. There there is no hint system. The the game I guess itself, the puzzles previous are the hint system. 
and in, and in that ways it kind of works, but sometimes it feels like if I've been stuck on a puzzle for 15, 20 minutes, I would like, I would like someone to say to me, the game, the game to say to me, you're looking at this wrong. Have you tried starting this way? You know, and that's it. Just a little, just a little nudge. But I understand making that for every single puzzle in the game would probably be ridiculous. Or, well, not probably, would be, would be ridiculous. I don't know my internet's name today, but man. look at me try to solve this puzzle like a moron. You gotta collect all the dots. You just gotta do it. That's what's so fun about that. And then it takes away the yellow one, and you have to solve it by yourself. So cool. So freaking cool. Oh my god. That's the thing about the game. It's so smart. No, just solve the puzzle, dummy. Okay. Like I just yell at myself for playing a game poorly. <laughs> You're not doing it right. You got a puzzle this way. Yeah, no, I understand where you're coming from that because uh, some games with hints, they will hint you to death. They will come up behind you and be like, hey, you've been staring at this wall for five seconds. Would you like to know a clue? And the clue is literally go here. Like that's not, that's the solution. That's not a clue. So I can understand that as well. You know, it, it almost, it almost needs a, kind of a, a prompt from the user to be like, hey, I want a hint with this. Um, oh, other things I guess I could say. It kind of can take a while to walk around the world if you want to go far places. There's no, there's a map, but there's not a map on you. Uh, and I, I, I don't think it needs a map. I think it needs a way for me to look up if I'm done with an area. And, and there's, not to not spoil anything, there's hidden stuff and then there's the area proper. Like this is the area proper. And then there's hidden stuff too. I would like to know both separately for each area. And I don't believe there's any way to know if I've missed a panel in a certain area or, or not. And, and without numbering them, without like some kind of subtle numbering system below each panel, there's no way for me to look up. There's no way for the game to be like, Hey, you missed puzzle 375 in the jungle. Go do it, you know? So if I wanted to complete everything, there's no way for me to know. But that's kind of that's kind of the, the whole point. That's kind of the mystery of the island. And and oh, I didn't even bring up the the oft obnoxious um, audio logs. Some of which go on for about ten minutes, and they're fine. They're like philosophers talking about philosophy, but they're really just distracting and they're hard to focus on, especially if you're solving a puzzle at the same time. And it's like man from Earth could see space and he saw the stars and he did it's like. I'm trying to solve a puzzle, like just cool it, cool it with your, your like you you can just you know talk to me about normal things, and I don't know, I I've listened to all of them I stumbled across, but I couldn't tell you anything. They're all just scientists talking about science and the world, and they're interesting, I guess, but kind of unnecessary in my opinion to be in, in unless something happens, unless there's like some giant plot twist that involves those audio logs that are quotes from Albert Einstein 60 years ago. Uh, but see, look at that. It's so fascinating. This fascinating shit where there's a missing thing. Oh my god. It's so good. The puzzle in this is so good. I've rambled on enough about how good these puzzles are. They're so good. Oh, like I said, dreams. Dreams about the game. Where I, and, I'll, and I'd wake up in, in my, and I'd roll over and be like, but well, what if I drew the line this way? And then you go back to sleep. Because <laughs> it's so many puzzles. They're everywhere. Like, puzzles, puzzles. So that is all about the witness. And that's the end of the show. I'll, I'll hang out if you want to ask me anything or say anything. I record the show live. 3 p.m. Pacific time every Friday right here where you are watching the show. And thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for not uh, yelling at me about something or 
complaining weirdly or being racist. Mainly just for being weird and racist. There's a lot of weird and racist people on the internet. I don't understand. Where are they where are they all hiding in real life? Where where are these people? Also, I don't know why my internet sucks today. It's usually really good. I need to grease up my chair. It is squeaky. Squeaky. Yep, thanks for hanging out. I don't want to reveal what this puzzle solution is, so I'll stop the video. <laughs> too afraid to say anything. That's a good point. Everyone, you know, they're too afraid to say that they're racist, but they're very proud of it online, which is weird. Which is weird. So you know it's wrong, but when you're a nominominimus, you can say whatever you want. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Also, yeah, good job being racist, idiots. I don't know. It's that's funny to me. No, get that off the screen. The witness. I have all these screens. I have all these different setups. I use like two of them. Hours of Photoshop, toiling away, just just toiling, toiling. Oh, the marker's right here. I don't think I've ever used the green one. Fun fact. Fun fact about markers. Where did it go? That's a, I, I, okay. If you're afraid to say you're racist to your friends, then you probably shouldn't be talking about it, you know. That's a good idea, right? You prefer to ask me anything. I'll stay here for like a couple minutes while I play with my table. It's a fuzz right here. How long have I been doing this? Um, October, end of October, I started doing it. The show hasn't changed much. I don't know if you saw the beginning of the show. Uh, the beginning of the show is kind of a news roundup in the style Kind of like The Daily Show, kind of like The Weekend Update from SNL, kind of. Oh, streaming as a whole. Wow. But streaming as a whole, uh, uh, about a year ago, actually, I started streaming. Fun, fun fact. I first streamed in 2008. I streamed the Resident Evil 5 demo. And my Xbox got the red ring of death during that. On the stream. So that's fun. Um... But yeah, that was on Justin TV. That was before Twitch even started. So if I had if I had continued streaming in 2008, it'd be a whole different world. Kind of like Man in the High Castle, tying it all back together. Um, but I've been doing this this show specifically since October. But I started streaming. I used to stream all the time, and now I stream less often. I'm gonna like, pick it up and start playing games that annoy me because people. I got the most viewers when I was dying horribly and complaining at a game. That's <laughs> someone once once said in a, in a stream I was doing for Super Mario Maker. They once said, "You uh, you like suffer in a fun in a entertaining way." Something something along those lines, and I was like, "Okay, I guess that's I guess that's good." I, I don't know. I don't even know what that means. I suffer well. Very strange. Very strange. Do I not have a? Put that back. Oh, my dashboard. Oh, no. What is this? This was a fun solution. I'll just let that play. Let's play it. Fun fact about The Witness. The Steam version doesn't have trophies. It just has two achievements. Or one. It might only have one. It's not nice. The PlayStation one has a bunch of trophies. I want trophies. 
I also want Steam trading cards. That's not nice. Not nice at all. <laughs> I do. It seems like it's oh the chat's probably really far delayed because my internet fucking sucks. Oh man, the Souls games are phenomenal. Um, Bloodborne was a game, my game of the year last year for leaps and bounds beyond anything else. Uh, I actually just played through Scholar of the First Sin. Never, I played through Dark Souls 2 twice, but I never played the, the changes for Scholar of the First Sin. And that was good. I also never played the third DLC uh, set, so that was good too. Dark Souls 2 is the dark horse of that, and it, and it deserves it. It just feels kind of lifeless in a lot of ways, and, and not as not as interesting as Dark Souls 1, or Bloodborne. Bloodborne's amazing. Um, but yeah, I've, I've streamed Bloodborne, um, I streamed Bloodborne on launch day for a while. Um, but I'm not, I'm not like a huge, I'm not, obviously not popular, clearly. I mean, plush toys like me, but people, I don't know. <laughs> it's about 30 seconds. You see, you say that. You say it's about 30 seconds. But I mentioned that like two minutes ago. <laughs> so I don't know. Are we in a time vortex? I don't know what's happening. But yes. Dark Souls is amazing. 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 I could, I could ramble on about Dark Souls for a long time. Long time. It's the best. Uh, the Souls games, Demon Souls through Bloodborne, are, is the best thing to happen to gaming since Half-Life 2, maybe? Um, which is a revolutionary game. And the funny thing about Dark Souls is that it harkens back, obviously, to to a time before, but it does it in a new, in a new updated way. of uh, It modernizes classic kind of how gaming works. See, that, that's an interesting point, too, because I, I love Bloodborne, and I... I Like, I, I just finished Dark Souls 2 this weekend, this last weekend. And I did pretty much everything in it. And after I was done with it, I was done with it, right? But after Bloodborne, I got the Platinum in Bloodborne. Like, I kept playing it. I kept doing all the pieces of it. Um, the DLC was amazing. I finished the DLC, and my first thought was, okay, let's do this again. Let's play this again. It has some intangible factor to me with the faster gameplay that's that's easier in some respects but more fun and, and and i do like the game particularly because it brought in some people that were too scared off by dark souls which honestly isn't that difficult if you just stop acting like a fool it always pissed me off and i'll get back to your point <laughs> it always pissed me off when i'd see people at preview events for like dark souls one and after i'd played demon souls and i'd see them and they're on they're on ign right and they're playing this video and they're not locking on anyone and they're just running around and I'm like who are these people that don't know how to play games that don't and it's a stupid thing to say because every Souls game could be someone's first game but the game tells you to lock on man like chill out you can't just swing your sword wildly um, oh the lack of depth I agree only being able to upgrade your weapon in terms of uh, uh, blood gems is a little limiting, obviously, especially compared to Dark Souls or any of the Souls games, actually. <laughs> um, but also the the equipment. I found the equipment very disappointing in the fact that there's one set you can get at the end of or at the beginning of the game, uh, kind of hidden. If you know if you know the game pretty well, as right before the first boss, you can fight. If you go back the other way and you go through this hole in the ground and you go down there, there's a good set of armor. That's the set of armor. I've beaten the game three, four times. That's the set of armor I use for the entire game. You can get it right at the beginning. All the other sets of armor are only minor changes, minor things. And and in, in that respect, too, the blood saw. Is it called the blood saw? Doesn't matter. That's the weapon I use for the entire game. Like, that's my weapon. That and the, the tantritus or whatever it is. Those are like, but besides that, that's my one weapon for the entire game, and that's cool and fine, but 
I would like more diversity and more actual reasons to try these weapons. And maybe hearkening back to like a Demon Souls day where you needed to have a uh, piercing weapon. You needed to have it. If you didn't have a piercing weapon, you would be fucked at certain points. You needed to have that. You needed to have something with a slash damage. You needed to have something in your arsenal with blunt damage. You needed it. And with Bloodborne, they really took that back to, to just hit anything with anything. It's fine. Um, I very seldom in the Souls games use the items like the lightning urns and the to, to abune your weapon. And in, in Bloodborne, they're entirely unnecessary because you can just dodge anything. And, and it's fun. Saw Cleaver, yeah, not Blood Saw. Um, you could just fight anything with anything, and that's fine, that's fun, that's great. But it's like, there is, there is depth that was stripped away. There's things like a leveling up, which I think actually is probably for the best. Um, going back to the Dark Souls 2 leveling up system, it's very... I won't say it's convoluted because that belongs to Demon Souls, is the most convoluted one. Um, but it's very kind of just... Um, oh, well now you get to see how to solve these puzzles. <laughs> Although I fucked it up. It's, it's easier to, to understand what's happening, and I think that's, that's better as a whole. But yeah, they, I mean, they completely, for all intents and purposes, they got rid of magic. Which I know they didn't. They, there's the things you can still do with that use bullets, but I never used them. I never needed to. I never cared. And that's the thing that, like in all Dark Souls games, Dark Souls 1 and 2, I always have pyromancy. Because it's, it's that little ace in the hole, that little thing in your pocket that you, like, I might need a projectile. I might need that and it might come in handy. But with, with Bloodborne, specifically because of the regain mechanic where you can, uh, heal after getting hit, it changes the entire game, and for the better in a lot of ways, but it does, circling back and rambling on, it does strip away components. Um, oh my god, the most frustrating thing, I'm glad now, um, you can, um, if you watch a, if you watch a, a demo of, of uh, any of the Souls games from E3, generally it's fine. But back in the day, man, when Dark Souls 1 was coming out and, and you'd watch videos, I'm sure it still happens now, but you, you'd watch these videos of these people playing these games and it's not even like, I get Dark Souls is hard. I get it. I get it. It's hard. I get it. But you know that going in. And even if you don't know that, why are you playing like a buffoon, like rolling in circles and they're aggroing everything? And I'm like, that's partially the reason why I don't watch previews for Souls games. Because it's infuriating. It is so infuriating to see the, these things, and it and it's it, I, ugh, I can't I can't stand it. I can't stand it. The game fucking tells you press X to use the ladder. It's not hiding anything from you. Unbelievable, unbelievable to me. But I have a headache now because of this. It's unrelated. I've had a headache all day. <laughs> But yeah, the Souls games are amazing. I would take a new Souls game every day. Now, every couple months, um, I've said this somewhere, but uh, I would, I would, I would pay a monthly fee to just have a couple of new dungeons every month in a Souls game. You know, just oh, I pay five dollars a month and I get a dungeon. Every month for Bloodborne. Okay, I'm down. I'm down with that. I'm down with that in perpetuity. Um, yeah, magic is gone. You can, you can't, that's the other thing. You can't purely be magic, which, to be honest, um, um, fuck, where'd my head, oh, I've only ever done one magic only playthrough of a Souls game, and that was in Demon Souls. And even then, obviously, I had a sword, um, because you just can't be popping mana um, herbs or whatever. It was spices, probably, I think, in that game. Um, but yeah, it, it is disappointing to see magic. And it's very interesting to see magic coming back in a different way in terms of uh, an actual mana bar in Dark Souls 3. I wonder what that could possibly mean. Um, and And you are right. I always thought they 
their shit on purpose to make the game seem harder. I think what you're saying is uh, that they make the demos harder than the actual game in those E2 demos, and that is that is true. I've been to I've gone to E3 three times. Um, the last E3 I went to was 2014, um, and I'm glad I didn't go last year, and I probably won't go this year because it's it's once you've done it three times, it's kind of like all right, I'm done. Even twice, I was the third time. I was just like, this is old hat. This is almost boring now. Um, which is sad, it's amazing, but it's like, I've done this. Uh, I would say go to PAX if you want to go to any show. Anyway, they do make the demos harder. They do do things that are like, well, in the actual game, you don't have this many health potions. You don't have this much health. There aren't the damage values. Like, I was playing, oh, what was it? It was, um, it was Dark Souls 2. It was Dark Souls 2. Um... And I could tell, like, you were, they were, um, fighting these normal enemies, and it took, like, three hits to kill them, or three, four hits to kill them, and you were doing, like, 800 damage to them. But they were just normal grunt enemies, and if you've played any Souls game, you know, 800 damage for just a random, like, zombie is a lot. So, they're definitely skewing things to make it be more difficult. Maybe they're making it more difficult, but it's still the easier enemies. There's definitely some some funniness going on. They they do that for sure. Um, I don't I don't know why, but I can't think of any other per specific examples. I played I played the Dark Souls one or Dark Souls two DLC, the first one at E3. Uh, was, was that the last? I don't know. Whatever year it was, 2013, and that wasn't. That was appropriate. Like that was how that was in the game because they basically gave you an end level character, so it's it's about appropriate. And I think I, I played it for about thirty minutes, uh, which is too long, but that was fun. I'm going to Gamescom. Gamescom's supposed to be crazy. Gamescom's supposed to be packed as shit. I would say if you've been to Gamescom, you've been to an E3. You've been to it. You've been to a show that's bigger than E3. You know, you must be in the in the UK. Well, God, I would imagine <laughs> you're not flying from here and going to going to Gamescom and not going to like PAX or something. I would imagine. But E3 is, E3 is great, and E3 is weird though. It's really. Like, I don't understand E3 in a lot of points. Like, it's supposed to be for media, and that's how I, I went, because I write for a website, and so I was able to go through them. So I was there with a media badge. But then there's all these people running around, and there's, like, kids sometimes, and there's not supposed to be kids, and it's a weird, it's a weird place, and it's not, it's not, um, it's not laid out very well. I understand Gamescom kind of has a, kind of has a, uh, Well, that train of thought just ran away. Um, <laughs> Gamescom is it's going to be set up about the same way as an E3. You know how the booths are, and it's going to be the same demos, really, too. It's only a couple months after. It's all the same demos. That's the thing. One year I went to, I went to GDC, E3, and PAX Prime in the same year, and that is stupid and overkill. Never do that. Um, but that was a fun year. I just graduated college, and they show the same demos. Like there was the same demo I played at GDC at PAX, and some a lot of the same demos were the same ones that you played it. again. Like I played the same Metal Gear Revengeance demo that was at E3. It's the same one at PAX because they're not making all these demos. And it's also a bunch of garbage too. When you hear people, when you hear devs say, "Oh, we don't want to release a demo that takes time away from our our thing," and I'm like, "I played a demo of your game." at E3. So don't lie to me and say you didn't have time to make a demo. You did, and you released it only to the press. There was a demo of Tomb Raider, because I saw it at, at PAX. Okay? So it exists. The demo exists. They don't put the demos out anymore. Or or rather, they maybe they don't uh, want to spend the time and money, money really, on uh, polishing a demo and making it bug free. Because these demos do sometimes have a little bit of issues, but sometimes they're the same demo. 
like the Resident Evil 6 demo I played at E3. Same demo that they released of the game, so... It's a little funny. It's a little funny when I when I hear developers say they, they don't take time. They don't want to take time away to make a demo when they do for E3. So, that's all I'm saying. Century of Czech Republic. Czech Republic, that's a real place? No, just kidding. Um, don't ask me to point it out on a map. I'm bad at geography. That's cool, though. Worldly side. I mentioned this. I write for thegamefanatics.com. I don't write too often anymore. I kind of am doing this show is kind of I kind of want to parlay this with them and attach it to their brand as well but it'd, be, it'd still be my show and just talk to people you know talk to people about games because apparently some people uh, like that a lot of people I could I could link I could link the site Boom. The last thing I did on the site was something that won't be relevant to you in the Czech Republic, but about uh, Amazon Prime and GameStop and uh, Best Buy gaming deals. So that's that's irrelevant to the Czech Republic. <laughs> but besides that, why is my internet being spotty, man? It sucks. It sucks. It really sucks. Here's more witness. <laughs> See, this puzzle, oh, I could have solved it right there. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Puzzle solution right there. This is an example of good puzzles that you can run into early and not quite be sure what they want you to do. Very cool. Very, very cool. But I think that's it. I think I've rambled on enough <laughs> for today. Um, thanks for hanging out. Come, come say hi. Whenever. I'm here. No one else is here, but I'm here. Always here. I say 3 p.m. Pacific time, but if you're in the Czech Republic, I don't know when that is, or when to tell you that is, but it's now, an hour ago. That's what time. Every Friday, if you have anything else to say, I'll be here for about a minute. But nice talking to you. Have fun. Merry, merry internet. To you. And how do I change this thing? How do I get off this thing? I don't know. Oh, that's what I need to do. I need to make a... I need to make a show's over slide. It took me six months to realize that. Go to work or go to sleep or go somewhere. <laughs> what are you doing? This is crazy. Crazy. So it's, wow, so it would be at midnight. It's the late night show, right? Oh, so my references for SNL might not be a, might not be a good reference point. <laughs> you probably have, I don't know. I don't know how things work outside of America. It's the only country, right? I've never heard of other countries. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how space works, or time. <laughs> All right. Catch you later if you want to hang out uh, next week, same time, hour before. Thanks for being here. And have fun. Go to sleep. Go to work.